Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel. I'm Johnny, it's Johnny on the Trail. And um, I've mentioned to you guys before about coming up uh, and seeing the uh, Muddy Pond Sorghum um, Farm uh, here at Cades Cove, uh, grind some sorghum. So uh, I just talked to Mr. Gunner a few minutes ago and uh, he's getting ready to grind up some and uh, work on making some sorghum. So let's check it out. Um, so I do 15 gallons of juice per batch. And about two thirds of that time, this green foam will skim, will fall out of it, and have to skim it off. And it eventually, this foam actually sort of turns into a, uh, a yellow color. And you'll hear older people talking about when they were children, they would they would eat eat the foam, and that's the foam shows up in the last part of it that's actually edible. And uh, like I said, it's doing 15 gallons of juice per batch. Takes me two and a half hours to boil it down ends up making six quarts of syrup out of 15 gallons. Yeah, I reduce it down about 10 to 1. Yeah. So, that's an original press out there in the field that used to be used when folks lived here in the cold. And under the roof there, that rock and dirt furnace, clay furnace there, and that pan on it, that would have been an original furnace that was, uh, pan that was used here. So the press that I'm using here is actually an 1896 press. That out there is 100 years older. And I built this little stove here to sort of mimic what's out there to be able to do a demonstration of what this tree used to be done here. Yeah. All right, I'm pretty well caught up on the skimming here. I'll go get some cane and uh, do some grinding here. All it does is make some thick sweet syrup. And when y'all get through watching me grind here, you're welcome to go across there and they'll give you a sample of it. You may want to take your jar home with you. With you. All right, see if I can get it. Uh, my mule Maddie here going. All right, Maddie, come on. That's pretty good obedience, isn't it? I've had better luck with her than I have the wife. <laughs> and the nice thing about Maddie is, well, there's, there's no back talk. They're very peaceful, yeah. Wife said if you like the mules so good, why don't you just go sleep with them? Well, I tried that. Not good partners to sleep with. There's a whole lot of crap in the barn, let me tell you. Whoa! Stop when I tell her. Let's see if I can get her started. Maddie? See, I don't have to yell at her. She don't get mad. Isn't that nice? Don't anyway, so this cane that I'm feeding through here is sorghum cane. This mill that's being turned here is an 1896 press made by the Chattanooga Plow Company. It has three rollers in it, one large one and two small ones. The first set of rollers is set at 3 16 inch part. The last one is set at 1 16 And so it actually double presses it to get the ultimate amount of juice out of it. So it takes about 70 to 80 pounds of cane, about all that I can carry, to make a five gallon bucket of juice. If I don't have to go do other things, it takes about 20 minutes for me to fill a five gallon bucket of juice. And that five gallon bucket of juice will boil down and make two quarts of syrup. So back in the day, when people lived here in the mountains, they were too far north to grow sugar cane. Sorghum cane is what they grew. So it won't grow. Well, it'll grow, but it's not a long enough season for it to actually mature. Yes. Uh huh. And so, if they didn't grow some sorghum cane or have honeybees, they didn't have much sweetener because back in those days, the tractor trailers and paved roads were not as common as they are today. Pretty good mule in it. How long you work I'll work them a couple hours and then I switch them out. The one behind you there is Ethel. Their sister. 
I raised them, trained them. Takes me about two and a half hours to boil that down, and that ends up making about six quarts of syrup. As it boils, this green foam boils out of it. That green foam actually is chlorophyll. That's the reason the juice is green. It's very important to skim that off without skimming that off. It, uh, it will boil and churn and become part of the syrup and make the syrup very strong and bitter. So if you've had really strong, bitter syrup, so the, one of the things that you know, I've learned over the long time that I've been doing it, very important to have the right the right temperature at the right time to get it to boil the green out of it and be able to get it skimmed off. Otherwise, I could simmer it all day long and the green would never boil out of it and it would just be part of it. Yeah, actually here at the end of the day, I will uh, put some hay down by the mules there and pour it on their hay, and they love it. Oh! Yeah, they really like it. But cattle, hogs, sheep, goats, they all like it. I guess it's pretty good. The doc said it was good for you, but I hadn't felt that sick, so I had to try it. It looks gross, don't it? I don't think so. Y'all can go right over here, Cross. Uh, you, you can't get it out of there. You just can't get it skimmed off. And, and that's why traditionally sugar cane is boiled on a cast iron kettle. Right. But, but that's no. what we did, but it still had a, maybe the kettle wasn't seasoned properly. I figure that's probably what I thought. All right, and there you have it, Muddy Pond Sorghum. Uh, he's grinding some uh, sorghum cane, not sugar cane, uh, and boils it down and makes sorghum out of it. So he's going to get back to work. He's got to try to get it done before dark. So anyway, thanks for watching. See y'all later.